Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Neopets the Darkest Fairy. <gasps> Yay! Today we're getting. What? Praised hmm. by the Herald? Herald by the Herald. For our job in Bogshot. But today we also need to figure out where we're going to go next in order to move the main story forward, because it's at this time where we almost have a little bit of, uh, say, free reign in order to go wherever we want. Uh, and in terms of this, the first place we're going to go back to is actually talking to King Hagen in order to get his advice. Because he did offer it in order to figure out where we're going to go. Yes, we did, good sir. Your Majesty, I mean. And we've already seen that the bridge is good, so that's alright. Oh, he's just telling us to go straight to Meridel in order to get Fiora's Rod. Excellent. Alright. Sounds like a good idea to me. There might be a bunch of purple clouds kind of swirling around everywhere, but we totally should be able to get into Meridel at this point, right? How do we get past this? You don't. You can't get through dark fairy magic this powerful. Hmm, you're feisty. I like that in a target. But this is too much fun to stop now. I tell you what, I'll wait on the other side of this wall and watch your kingdom be destroyed bit by bit. Once it's done, I'll come out and kill you. What do you think? <laughs> I really hate him. But how do we get through this thing? You need to counteract really dark magic with something light. Perhaps another fairy? Illison! Illison the Earth Fairy is here! Could we use her magic? Of course! That's even better! Since Illison is tied to the land, where do we go? That way. But when I last saw her, she wasn't doing too well. She may be under that evil fairy's control. Well, then we'll have to save her, won't we? It seems like the assassin just wants to be a lazy ass. Just kind of hovering around on the other side of the wall here. Just watching the kingdom be destroyed bit by bit, which doesn't make sense because the darkest fairy could just like crush it with her fist. That's all she really needs to do. So, yeah, we can't get into Meridel, because we do have a wall here, slash invisible wall. So let's head back to King Hagen once more in order to figure out where we're going to go. <gasps> and this is where we're kind of at a... at odds with how the game actually mm. wants us to be able to go from oh. here. To put it simply, there's three different ways you can tackle this section of the game because it's, again, like I've mentioned before, semi-open world mm. with huge asterisks. You can either follow King Hagen's advice, which the game kind of expects you to, in this case mm. you have to get the charm in order to get into Meridel, which means that we have to go to the Wereloop King in the Wereloop Woods and that's where he decides for us to go. Mm. Sir Dryzden, on the other hand, mentions Market Town and how we should probably go there as well because of his intel. <gasps> However, on the other mm. hand, we have our own player agency. We can go anywhere we so wish, to be completely honest. Like, I could go to Gogum, or I could go to Illison's Glade. Unfortunately, no, I can't, because there's an invisible wall here. And also text it mentioning that it's like, yeah, we shouldn't go here until we actually get Illicent's charm. So yeah, we're kind of stuck here at the moment. Yeah, can't go in here yet. <laughs> we're going to come back here a couple times just to mention, like, just to mention the structure of the game at this point. So what does that leave us with? Well, let's check a look at the quest log. We have a bunch of main quests in order to get to, including the main one, which is actually getting into Meridel Castle to get Fiora's Rod. But there's all of the other places we can go as well. Market Town, Tor's Farm, Coggan Village, 
And um, let's just say that there are four different quests for dealing with Illicin herself. Getting into Meridel, freeing the village, getting your charm back, and just one that's called Illicin the Earth Fairy. I don't know why there's so many different quest lines when all four of them technically get solved at the same time. However, we're going to head into Kagum first. We're going to get that one done first. And here's the reason why. There's a third way about going about the order in which you actually liberate all of the areas, and that has to do with cutscenes. You see, I've mentioned this before, how certain cutscenes are coded before others. And you might have noticed even with just the cutscene we just saw with um, Outside of Meridel, how I was not correct in what Roberta was wearing. Well, there is a note about Robert that cutscene in specifically where technically it was made in order to serve as an advertisement for the game. So it was one of the first cutscenes that was made. So, in that case, what I'm going to do is actually follow cutscene order, where depending on what kind of liberation I'm going to do, I want to make sure that the characters, Tor and Roberta, match in what, the what they're supposed to be wearing in the cutscene. This does mean that Kagam is first because of something that we're going to be getting here and in this area. Now we're kind of going around here and we're noticing that barely anybody's here but Gershwin. So Gershwin is somehow not taken compared to everybody else in the town being taken by the Ixie Raiders again. Huh, interesting. So, that means that we have to go to the mines. What mines is he specifically meaning? Well, it's a mine that we haven't been to yet. It's not the Marilode mine, it's not the old mine, it's a new mine. Which means that we have to go into the Kagum Steps once more, to the abandoned mine, according to the quest log, in order to get them back. Kagum is one of the areas that is actually really quick to do because it's just a revisit of an old area, so there really isn't much to add in the beginning stretches of the area, but there is a new area that we're going to explore pretty soon. The other thing to mention is that the Ixies are dark this time. You've got to be kidding, I've done this again. <laughs> i got to stop putting through them through the floor. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh boy. Okay, now that we're back here, after falling to our death, at least it falls to our death with us. The real big change with the Ixies is that the Ixie archers are a little bit more um, difficult to manage, especially when you're dealing with groups. Because now they shoot fire arrows, which, if they land on the ground, create a fire pillar. So the two best ways in order to deal with it is either to block the attack with the shields or, you know, just avoid it because you have usually a big huge area in order to deal with. But, ah, this is kind of what I mean by the fire pillars being a, kind of an annoyance because you could have other, area, other enemies just kind of combine with them, which means that you can't actually hit them. They're also dark aligned compared to their previous alignment, so your light motes are going to be used here. There's not much else until we actually get to the actual new section of the steps, but there is a slight detour that we need to take, which is into the Marilod Mine. Remember that we have a treasure map here? Well, I mentioned way, way beforehand that this treasure map is actually very, very important important to get. It also makes it a little bit strange that um, this specific treasure is actually pretty unique out of all of them. You can also get another supernova mode if you want. It keeps respawning every single time you reload the game. Also the exploding crystals everywhere. 
And I'm going to switch to Roberta, because this is a Roberta-specific treasure. You wouldn't know it unless you actually played the game before, so Tor can pick it up as well. But this is such a weird treasure to put in a treasure map chest. This is the Codex of Protection. Similar to the Tome of Warding that we got in Bogshot, this is another upgrade to Roberta's shield. Her actual final upgrade, too. She only gets two, so this is her level three shield. I'm not sure exactly what it's supposed to do, but I think it just makes her shield a little bit bigger. That's the only thing I can really get out of it. Alright, let's get out of the mines and actually head into the... kind of the changes. So, heading up here, we have our general split that we're able to go across. However, well, we're gonna deal with what's over on the left pretty soon. But we also have the right-hand side, which had that uh, dam system, which has been uh, smashed to pieces. So we can no longer return to where that um, old hideout for the chieftain was. So we have to go to, over to the left now. The Marilode Mine. There's also this guy here. I don't know what he's doing here. You can't talk to him. He is fascinated with that rock. I assume he's one of the people you're supposed to save. But I can't say for certain. Don't know why he's there. But the rocks are gone from this other area. Pathfinding, okay. <laughs> They're not real. These guys really aren't so much guards as, well, every other spearman I've dealt with. They like guarding a little bit more, I've noticed. Either that or parrying. If this game really does parry. You also think that you could get up the this track here, but apparently it's just too steep of a slope in order to get up it, so you do have to go over to the ledge. Not sure why. Now we have that windmill that's been on the map, which is one of my greatest mysteries. I'll explain a little bit later. But over on the left is a flurry of clover patch! More clover, more luck, more fun. And also a zipline down. Don't want to do that yet, I don't want to go over and do another lap of the steps. Long way down, though. This does leave us to... well, there's a waterfall there. The only way in is into the darkness here. Where will it lead us? Have me stroll in beyond my control. We enter what is known as... well in a little bit as we get overloaded with more main quest stuff. The Abandoned Mines, where we have to rescue six people scattered throughout this map that looks pretty big just on the intricacies of the map, but in all honesty, it's actually not that big. The only thing that it really does is you can get turned around into which areas you are actually in. But what I want to do first is actually pick up this hammer. Pretty much because the side quest attached to it actually uh, works properly and doesn't actually auto-complete once you actually have the, the item specifically. The other thing that the Abandoned Mines has is not only does it have the blue crystals, but it has these purple crystals, which actually have pretty good rewards in it if you're lucky. It can be full restorative items to loads of Neo points just exploding out of it. Which is hopefully what I want to try and get as I'm going through this place. Beyond that, well, this area is... well, it's a mine. I'm not sure really what else to explain with this whole place. The first area is pretty cave-like. 
And after, before playing this area, test-wise and otherwise, I kind of didn't remember a whole lot about it. Pretty much just because it serves its purpose. I think the main thing is that I don't really know why it's called the Abandoned Mines. Because it's not really abandoned. Because we'll see a lot later on that a lot of the other people, the residents of Kagum, mentioned that it's like, oh, the mines are open again. It's like, well, you, this seems to be the most active mine out of the three that we've now seen. Just not sure what the what the deal is with all of this stuff. The other thing I'll mention is that we passed a save point back there. Save points are really sporadic in this area. There's a good amount of save points. I'm just not sure why certain uh, save points are where they are. Some are really close together, too. Like, they expect you to die a whole lot. And there's a reason for that. I'm totally using the wrong mode here. Because I'm going like, oh yeah, they're, they're fire, fire aligned. So I should use fire. No. Luckily, just because of the sword that I have, the strength actually negates the amount of damage that I lose. Here's the first chest up here. Hey, good. Oh, uh, well, not really that good. But any Neo Points is good Neo Points, I guess. There's only two treasure chests in this area, so it's good that there isn't a lot of treasure chest hunting in Syria, but I feel like they could have populated this map a little bit more. Feels like a missed opportunity with a bunch of this bunch of these places. There's also only Dark Ixie archers in the mines, mixed with the Draconax everywhere. Not sure why they decided to just not place spearmen in areas. But I guess it's just because the, the spearmen really don't do a whole lot. And aren't really upgraded just other than their elemental alignment. Okay, buddy. There we go. Quit hopping back. We're all good. And then there's our first guy. Right next to a purple crystal, which is always good. Aww. Yeah, it's a smithy. <laughs> Every time you free a miner, they'll talk about the Ixi Chieftain and what's been going on since the purple clouds have arrived. Specifically, he talks about how the Chieftain has powers. <laughs> Scary, spooky powers. Oh, well, that's not got a good reward at all, it's just a moat? Ugh. Fine. East side of the map, not really all that interesting because it's pretty cleared out and not used all that much. However, let's get into the next third of this map, which actually has to do with minecarts. Go always nice. Minecarts will be going automatically once you reach this area because apparently they're just waiting to be activated by you entering the area. But that also means minecart tracks that we can actually just explore as we're going through. And the minecarts can hurt you. Except I've tried to test whether or not the archers can be hit by the minecarts as well. It seems unreliable. Sometimes I feel like they can be hit, but it's pretty negligible damage. So in order to actually move further into the mines, you actually do have to move along the track. Just be careful to keep to the side of the tracks as you go through, because, well, carts are going to come through all the time.
You can make sure that you're not going to be hit by the carts in most places by just making sure that you're watching the screen for rumbling and possible noises if you're able to. This leads into a nice shortcut for our second guy to get to Giovanni. I'm sure you've explored this mine enough. Froggy! That's all I'm thinking about. <laughs> yeah, okay. There we go. Two down, four to go. And now we have to make our way out the normal way because that was a high cliff. Now, if we do this properly and actually have some water motes on ourselves, we'll notice how easy it is to take out the giant dragon axe now that we have the Kaludan sword. Very, very easy. Giant dragon axe can actually drop a, a whole bunch of different things, depending on what your luck is. Can be motes. I've seen silver negs actually drop off of giant dragon axe as well. Also, if you kind of like sneak up on uh, Draconax as they're sleeping, apparently there is some sort of hidden sneaking damage. I think I mentioned this before, because sometimes you can one-shot Draconax and sometimes you can't. But let's go explore some carts some more. Let's go up this way. Pretty sure that this track if goes up to the north tip. Cross. And this is kind of just an open area where, depending on your timing, you're going to get hit or not hit. And the northernmost tip of the map actually has this Nova mode here. Always good to have more. And let's circle back because there's another area that I want to go to which is over on the other set of tracks. But just keep in mind of this area specifically where the Ixi Archer is able to fire pretty high up. Do we want to... Nah, we'll drop off there. Well, I'm in the main body anyway, so I want to go over to the right tracks and actually head south? Maybe I can get to it from here. Honestly, this area, I keep forgetting what I'm actually able to do here because... As much as I would, like, try to make it interesting, it's... it their minds. That's all they really are. Ah, here we go. Yeah, there's this little alcove here which leads to this purple crystal here, but I have to make sure that I'm getting in the right spot to... that. Ah! God damn it. Okay. Let's try that again. Okay, I gotta really just, like, be way, way more careful, because this place explodes Neo points out, and I know I'm not going to go a whole lot as that bag goes away. Less of a return than I'd want, but I also don't want to fall into the lava, which the mines also inexplicably have, and lava is an instant game over. Speaking of lava, here's, the su here's a look at the southern tip of it. Wow. Pretty good scenery. I do like kind of lava caves. They're always fun. I just don't like falling into random pits. Silver egg, okay. What about this other one? Okay, Fiora's potion. And I got one of everything restorative wise. Got some money. Okay. That's pretty much what I'm looking for in with all of the tracks going everywhere. Now I can head back and get back to that area with the Ixi Archer, which shouldn't take too long. Just have to go on the little left side of the tracks. And head my way up. There we go. The 
first time I played through the mines area, I was really confused about how to actually continue and get onto the western side. Because it... It really doesn't show a, very well how to get there, but it is that just like small section that is just disconnected from everything. So just drop down here with the Ixie Archer and then go to town as it jitters away in the corner. <laughs> Come on, stop jittering and just fall down. I'd freeze you, but I don't want to. Well, there's more than one. Let's get rid of this one right down there, and I think there's one on top there. And if you're kind of thinking to yourself, oh, I can't get back up in order to get out of here normally. Ow. Ah! Ah, fire! There is a ladder in order for you to get out normally. Wait for the cart. There we go. Hopefully he doesn't shoot me again. Whoop, money! Gotta get the money before it goes away. There we go. Almost a thousand Neo points out of that one as I get him stuck in a wall. Great. I guess I could consider this like the halfway point because the save point's here. But there's also, I think, two other save points in the western half that are just kind of in, I don't know, odd spots? No, there's like, no, is there, is there three? I don't know, I'll have, to, I'll have to look. It'll be an adventure together as we get our next guy who is very similar to uh, the, the smithy. Someone we actually haven't met yet. It's just an old guy. Uh -huh. The Ixie Raiders are just looking to slaughter everybody in the most dramatic way possible. Again, who is this game for? <laughs> and now we can just head into the tunnels here. And we'll notice something about the tunnels as we go through them which is really only in this area and no other area in the game. It's like a mechanic that the development team wanted to use, but really only found a reason here. Because there's all this debris here, but no mention of it on the map. So the thing we're actually going to do is just kind of head back to the other side. And this Ixie Archer is just kind of by its lonesome. And you'll notice all of the crystals that are kind of in a line, all in a hallway here. So we're on the other side here. If I smash it, apparently the explosive power of the crystals gets rid of the debris and opens up all well, the entire area because it just makes a chain reaction occur. Including more and more Neo points that I want to get. Okay, and this art. I don't know if that archer was stunned or not, but it definitely was not interested in me at all. Not like this one. Oop, more chain reactions. Uh, okay, not much, not that much. Okay, let's get back in to get that other miner who is in the, the middle part of all this. And by miner, I hmm. mean Elspeth. Okay. Death to be Aww. long and torturous. Uh huh. Uh huh. Got it. It's like you have to make sure that everybody gets out. Well, I'm gonna rely on you independently in order to make your way out at this point. Doesn't matter where, but you'll do it. I'm confident in you. Okay, two more to go, and more divides in where we can go. The next one actually is pretty quick in order to get around to finding our next miner. Here is an another track. This track will lead us to pretty much the end of our dungeon here. But there's our other guy just kind of off by its lonesome, not being guarded at all.
Well, I'm technically making you save yourself because I'm all, all I'm doing is talking to you and apparently you're out just kind of scot-free. So, did I do anything other than clear the way, technically? I don't know. But that leaves one last miner, and he's in a very weird predicament. And of course, it's the mayor. Yeah, the, the mayor is going to be an interesting case about how to actually get there, because... I would say it's a little obtuse. But there's another place that we need to go to first before we actually go there. Because there's another chest to find. I think the best way of actually getting there... Is, well, not really that way, as fire comes out of the pits there. Here's our other save point. I'm not sure why it's actually there, because... This area doesn't really have much other than several places to die. Sometimes I ask myself why I'm not using potions of Mirka Speed a whole lot. And kind of the reason is that the abandoned mines really are not an area for really recommended using it, because there's a lot of small little routes that you're able to go around. And if you're not good with controlling fast movement of Tor, you're going to be, well, falling off of the edges here. Especially when it comes to the minecart tracks. Oh, just a moat. Alright. Maybe the other crystal over here will be a better treasure than the actual treasure. Oh, starlight potion. Note to self use starlight potion at some point. Alright. Well, let's get around to the western side to the opening of the huge lava pit on the south. Alright. Now we just are following the minecart tracks into the open lava area. Because, well, the mayor is somewhere around here. He's not obvious like the other five are because he's in a more specific location than last time. Specifically, you might see a twinkling area that's right over here. Are you going to twinkle again? There. Oh. There you are. Yeah, so there's a twinkling area right over here, which means that something's going to happen here. And if you actually look up from that area, you'll notice something that's hanging above that pretty much chunk of land. But that's not the way to go. The way to go is actually um, to do another leap of faith over to the save point area over there. It's not something you would really think to do firsthand, or off the top of your head. But it's what you need to do, because then you're able to access the bridge, and over there is our chieftain, who is going to be our next boss fight. See you next time, everyone, as we go and beat up our Ixie one last time.